Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com and in this video we have an Excel challenge. Now this is a spreadsheet that was sent in to me with something to accomplish and I've come up with my solution but I'll be interested in seeing what maybe you guys have as well. So I'm going to demonstrate my answer to this in this video. Feel free to pause it and have a go yourself before you see uh, the way that I did it. Because I'm sure there are many ways what with Power Query and potentially dynamic array formulas and VBA, etc. I'm going to keep it with some of the old school techniques so that any version should get this done though. Now this is the challenge. We have a list of riders and their times and the teams that they are for. Now this is only a small list, the real list is much bigger. And what we need to know are the top three performing teams. So we need the teams with the shortest total time. We need to sum up those times by team and come up with the three with the shortest totals. And we need to ignore any team that has less than three riders. So for example, there's the team in their LL, which only have two riders. So they are to be ignored. And then once we know the top three teams, we want to know the top three riders within those teams. The fastest three riders, those with the shortest times. So this is what I did. Now, the first thing I wanted to know are what are the best teams. I want to filter out those with less than three riders, sum those times, and know what are the top three. And I thought, what's the easiest way of doing that? Pivot table. That's what would be easiest. So I can click amongst this list, come up to insert and pivot table. I'm going to put this pivot table on this same worksheet. So I'm going to choose existing worksheet. The data range it's picked up is great. I'll click inside the location cell. And then I'm going to just dump it maybe over here somewhere for the moment. Cell P5 and click OK. And here I have my pivot table. Now to put this together, I'm going to move the club, so the team, into the rows area. So I've listed out the five different teams in this list. Could be a lot more. I'm going to move the time into the values area. Now immediately it starts to count the times. So I'm then going to right mouse click a time and summarize it by a sum instead of a count. I've now got the answers, but they're in a horrible decimal format. So I'll then right mouse click, number format, and I'll format those as times. First one's great, click OK. I now have the sum of the times for every single team. That's excellent. Next up though, I am interested in getting a count of how many riders there are within each team. So I'm going to drag the club field into the values area a second time. And because it's text, it will default to count. And we can now see that LL only have two riders. The others do meet the criteria of three or more. So I know I need to ignore LL, but at the moment the pivot table includes it. So I'm going to filter that out. I'll come up to the filter in row labels, value filters. It's going to be greater than or equal to. I'll then change the first option from the sum of time to the count of column. Sorry, the count of club column. And I'll enter three. It's got to be a value of three or more. So when I click OK, LL is removed. And then my final step here will be to right mouse click a time cell and sort those so it's smallest to largest. 
So we can now see that the top three teams or the top three clubs are AA, ZZ and XX. Now we have the information, we need to start looking at what are the top three riders from each of those teams. So our pivot table is set up with the top three teams and I have these areas where I need to now put the best three riders. I'm going to start by putting in the name of the club which is required by these, these ranges. And I'm just going to create a simple link to my pivot table fields. So for the first one, I'll type equals, click on the cell which stores the name of the first club. I'll fix that range and press enter. And then I'll just copy that down and say no formatting. And I'll repeat this process for the other two equals the second team name. Fix that with F4. And I'll copy this down, no formatting, and then once more. And as easy as that, using those pivot table rows, I have got my team names in. Getting the names and the times of the best riders will require a little bit more effort though. Now looking at the original list that I have, we could have done this at any point, but I've kind of decided to wait till now. I would like to sort that by the time, whereas at the moment it's by the name of the rider. But we ideally want to know the fastest riders. And they are the ones with the shortest times. So if I click on a time in this list, and I'll just use any sort button that we know, I'm going to data here to do it, A to Z. So now I have the best rider, which is P, from the XX club there at the top. Next step is to create a calculated column because I need to know the top three riders. I want to use a lookup formula to do that, but lookup formulas like VLOOKUP and MATCH would always return the first instance of what they find. So what I'm going to do here is write a quick little formula equals and I'm going to reference the name of the club. Now I'm using a technique there that is something I've done on a video before. So some of you may even recognize it. I'll put a link to that video for anyone who might be interested in seeing it in the description of this video. But I want to concatenate here the name of the club with their instance in this list. So in goes the ampersand to concatenate. And then I'm going to write a count if function so that I can count the instance of them in this range. Now the range is going to be something that uh, rolls with the formula. So I'm going to click on the first cell, D5, then I'm going to put in a colon so that I get D5 again. The first D5 in that range will be fixed. So the starting point of the range is fixed. The second part always moves and enlarges with the formula. I'm going to put a comma after this, reference that cell again close bracket, press enter and copy this to the bottom. Now if I reopen that formula just for a little bit more explanation, hopefully we can see a bit more of what I mean here now. So we can see that as we go down, it's looking for that club inside the range that grows the formula to see how many times it's occurred up to this point. So for XX here, it's saying, oh, so far you've occurred once, AA, so far you've occurred once. Then it hits XX again, because, okay, that is the second time I've seen that XX within the range of D5 to D7. So we can see how this is working, and we're going to use this in our lookup. Okay, so now we need to return the fastest rider's name from the first club AA. And I'm going to use that column that we've just created. Now for this, the name is the very first column of our table, of our list, the thing that we're returning. So yes, I could change its layout, but normally I jump on the VLOOKUP here for the lookup formula. I just get that done. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to use index match because of the layout of that 
list. Index the array. Well, the array I'm returning from is the range of names. So I'm going to highlight the range of names and press F4 to fix that. Then I'll put my comma in, set prompts for the row number, and this is where we need the match function. And the lookup value is going to be a combination of the best club name and the instance. For example, at the moment, the first instance. Now, the name has kind of been overshadowed by my formula right now, but I want to use cell J7. I could refer back to my pivot table at this point because I have the best team name actually written over there as well. But I'm going to use the one in the table itself next to the cell I'm currently writing this formula in. And I'm going to concatenate to that a number that I've written in column H. You can see I've written one, two, three, then one, two, three, then one, two, three for each of these team blocks for the top three teams. And I did that so that I could reference it within this formula. So I'm looking for a combination of the best club's name and the instance number. Comma, where are you looking for it? Well, in the range that we just set up, that calculated column we created. Fix that with F4, comma zero for exact match, close match function, close index function, run that, and then I'll look at copying it down, no formatting. And D, J, K, are the best free riders from the team AA, who are the best club. Excellent. They're actually the only three in this instance, but there could have been a lot more. I now need to return their time, so I'm just going to quickly put another index in here. This time the array is the times, fix it, comma, match. This is going to be, let's put a full stop in there, let me put my comma in. The uh, lookup value is a combination of the club name. You can see that a little bit better in this example now. And percent, the instance number, comma, where you look in the column we created. Fix it, comma, zero exact, close bracket, close bracket. And now we have the times as well. You may need to format those cells. I think I may have done that already in advance. And I'm not going to worry about doing the next two team names. Uh, maybe that's something uh, you can look at doing. Set up a little example of your own like this and go and get that done. So that is my solution to this challenge. You can actually see I've got a sum function is total here as well, which does require formatting. So let me just do that. I'll click on that cell, home. Let me choose time from here. Time, there you go. And that was the total time of that best team. Yes, so that is my solution to this. There are so many ways that we could accomplish this with different formulas um, and different features that Excel have nowadays. But that's what I wanted to do. Index match, count if, sorting lists, pivot tables, stuff that's been around for a long, long time. And no matter what version of Excel, you can use these formulas and features to solve this challenge. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.